Matt DeCourcy is the Parliamentary Secretary for the Minister of Foreign Affairs for Canada. He's also the MP Liberal for Fredericton Oromocto area. Our conversation touched on many things. Specific details, not so much. More we talked about process. In general terms, we tend to think of our elected officials as making decisions on our behalf. But maybe what actually happens is they spend more time working on the process and following the wishes of their electorate. Hope you enjoy the conversation. Um, so at the federal level, those are two ways in which uh, we are working on matters of food security and, and, uh, and long-term stability. I also think through immigration uh, initiatives, we're seeing people coming to our region and, uh, and moving into those fields as well. And I think it's important that we foster that. And I also know there are, there are organizations like the Ville here in Marysville mm -hmm. who are working on agricultural education programs with different populations, some from underrepresented groups. And we should be supporting those initiatives too. There's, there's, again, there's an economic growth opportunity there, but the, it's also important for our long-term security yeah. stability given, given the, the changing climate of the yeah. world. It's one of those topics that a lot of things have to happen at the same time in a lot of different places. Yeah, yeah. But you sit at that intersection. And so in a way, the, the leadership and, and um, support mechanism for that coordination um, that's one of the many shifts that are occurring that we can see those paradigm shifts. There's going to be shifts in our food security. There's going to be shifts in our transportation systems. Yeah. Yeah. And politics becomes the place where all those decisions um, intersect. Right. right. And it would be nice if, if, in general, people understood that there's more consensus that goes on than there might be portrayed at times <laughs> in media. I, I mean, I, I, I think in, in Canada there is, you know, take, take some of the... The political opposition that that comes to play on things out of the picture and there is a general consensus on the need to have a long-term view on our um, as you say our transportation systems our infrastructure I mean a 10-year plan to invest in infrastructure yep. is significant in the Canadian context but absolutely we need to be yeah. thinking 20 30 years out as well yeah so there's an interesting dynamic um, I'm wondering if the country would heave a sigh of relief if they ever saw out of the House of Commons one day when opposition leader, no matter which color, would go, that's a great idea. <laughs> Rather than the role of opposition is to oppose and find, you know, because there's a merit to challenging pieces and parts, but there's also something that we collectively would go, oh, finally, they agree on something. So I have heard, I have heard, I mean, I haven't heard that's a great idea, but I have heard uh, we support the government in this measure. Uh, we uh, believe in in a in a in a Team Canada approach, hmm. uh, specifically as it relates to the ongoing dynamic uh, between ourselves and our and our friends to the south. So, um, so that does exist. Uh, there are great ideas um, uh, entered or, or brought to the fore by hmm. members of all political stripes. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes those conversations are had. Uh, behind, uh, not uh, just away from the camera, mm -hmm. so that a real honest conversation can be had. And, and I can tell you that um, my colleagues in cabinet have worked across party lines to help bring some good ideas into the government's focus, um, uh, you know, in areas of, of, of support and, and, and working with Indigenous communities is, is one such <coughs> area, um, working on a uh, housing strategy for the country, which again yeah. is a long-term play. Yeah. Those, there's, there are ideas that come from all over the place, and yeah. and we do need to, to respect, and and value those ideas for what they offer. I was poking at one of those shifts that need to occur, because if the challenge we have is a 20-year solution or a 30-year solution, like education or healthcare, then somewhere along the way we have to get out of that four-year cycle of, well, oh, that's what they wanted to do, but now we're in power. So this, this shift between governance and being in power, you know, they're, they're two very different approaches to shared challenges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there are things that need to be done uh, in the immediate term. And, 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 you know, given that we have a four-year mandate, we know we have to move promptly on things to set the wheels in motion. Mm -hmm. um, and, 
and certainly I'd like to have the opportunity to see this through uh, for a longer period than four years. I absolutely love what I get to do. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and that would be the answer I would give anyone and everyone. It's a complete joy to be a part of this. Um, there's an exciting pressure to things and there's also a really great sense of reward, um, when, uh, when I get to connect with people in the community. Um, and, uh, and sometimes there's, there are conversations that are challenging, um, but I think people are really reasonable in the way they approach me when when they when they do so, and so I certainly appreciate it. And we'll check in with you really at, like uh, in the fourth year when it gets a little hotter. See how much grayer <laughs> I've gotten, Dennis. <laughs> yeah. What's been the most challenging so far? Um, I at first, uh, on a personal note, I mean, I had uh, I recognized I think six to eight months in that I probably needed to. Uh, be healthier in some of my habits. Um, I found myself probably not sleeping as much as I should, or, or not sleeping as maybe not sleeping as much, but just the hours that I was sleeping weren't yeah. as conducive to a healthy lifestyle. Um, making sure that I kept a, a a healthy diet as much as possible. You know, everything in moderation, right? Yeah. And um, and and making sure that uh, you know I, I exercised well as well so I've I've learned to take the time to exercise and get to the gym and it provides me an opportunity to see people and talk with people when yeah. I'm there as well so yeah. that's enjoyable yeah you might always be on in a way look uh, that is part of, of of the lifestyle that I lead with this with this job and uh, I'm really happy to do so and uh, I love the opportunity yeah. to talk with people when we spoke a year ago, I asked you a question about the natural tension that comes with representing a geographic area mm -hmm. and then a party that would say, we need you to vote this way. Because that, that goes with the turf. It's just part of the job. Have you run into that yet where you've had to vote along party lines even though your your constituents are saying um, we would prefer you voted the other way? Uh, no. Um, there are... So... so no, I haven't found myself in that stuck in that stuck spot in that between stuck stuck in that spot yet. Mostly because the things that we are moving forward with are things that we committed to doing, things that that I was comfortable with when I decided to put my name forward and run with with the party under the leadership of the of the party and of the prime minister. There are private members' bills that get brought forward in the House of Commons that um, often. Um, I can see merit to or value in and uh, the great thing about being in Ottawa is the chance to talk with people who can raise challenges with certain aspects of of those bills and or provide insight into how that is being incorporated into something else that the government is trying to achieve or that the government is doing so I've I felt comfortable with the conversations I've had with my cabinet colleagues and, and ministers who are the lead on, on certain files. Um, I mean, per, to be perfectly honest, the, the vote is yes or no. It's not like I believe 52% this way and 48% that way. Um, it, it would be only human to be a bit conflicted on some things, yes. but, but I've, I've resolved to feel comfortable with 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 my voting record so far and the way that issues are worked through yeah. um, in Ottawa. Thanks for that, because that's some of the human face that goes with the job, and rather than the objectified, you were supposed to do this. You know, right. right. It, it, yeah, it personalizes it. So thanks for for no sharing problem. that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we're almost done. How would you like to end? Uh, I mean. I, I take every opportunity to thank people for the opportunity that I've that I've been afforded. Um, I know that uh, I don't always have um, answers that satisfy everyone, and um, and I respect the views that people have on certain issues uh, where we may disagree. I have a tremendous amount of respect for the reasons they come people come to those views and, and, and the decisions they take on things. Um, I've, I've also 
uh, and, and this is how you started off, Dennis, by explaining we come to this job with without a complete knowledge of all the issues. And I've come to learn to rely on colleagues uh, as well as people with subject matter expertise or experience in an issue to help inform me about the, the relative merits or um, drawbacks of certain issues. I mean, we have to rely on each other in this job. And uh, on top of that, I mean, any person only has so much bandwidth <laughs> with which to to hold, you know, knowledge of something or remember something or comprehend something. So um, yeah. we've said this a few times throughout this conversation. It's 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 a, it's a real human experience hmm. being, you know, an elected official. Yeah. Uh, but again, I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. What's in the near future for you? What's what's your schedule like the next couple of months? Um, so we uh, we will sit in Ottawa from the very end of January uh, to the end of June. And and again, the general schedule of things tends to be three out of every four weeks is a sitting week, and then there's a week generally around uh, the statutory holidays that exist: Family Day, March breaks, Easter, the May long weekend, Victoria Day, um, where we get to be back in our communities. Um, my schedule uh, as a rule is to fly up Sunday evening or, or Monday morning and fly back Friday evening because I'm generally on duty for question period on Fridays because yep. my minister is uh, busy. Is busy. Um, there will also uh, likely be some travel uh, involved uh, on the file as parliamentary secretary uh, for some of that time. We've got, we've got a busy agenda internationally this year we chair the g7 the group of seven um and uh and uh, and we have an ambitious agenda domestically and in the world and uh, and you know people want canadian um they want canadians and they want canada as a part of the conversation um, in their countries and so we need to be available to provide whatever support uh, we can and also learn from them as well yeah. so uh, uh hoping to have some of those experiences uh, again uh, in this uh, sitting of parliament thank you thank you that was wonderful thank you for watching be good have fun love each other the dennis report is an independent media production to support the program go to dennisatchison.com and click become my patron on patreon mm -hmm.